Welcome back to Saxcast Breaking Down the Riff. Um, this week we're looking at Gerald Albrightlick, who is one of my all-time fame favourite sax players, um, mainly on alto, but I'm looking at a tenor riff this week. He did a live um, kind of jam at home, um, which has been really exciting because we've not really heard much from him over this kind of pandemic lockdown situation. And I thought, yeah, let's do a bit of a, a Gerald Albright thing. Uh, it's not too tricky, but there might be a new technique that we might be picking up. Uh, so I'll just play it again for you. It goes like this. Okay, so something unusual going on there near the end. Let's have a look. So the kind of um, basis of this is A minor pentatonic. So if we play through the scale, the notes that we need will be A, C, D, E, G, A. And back down again. Okay, so that's the pentatonic. And obviously you can go as high and low as you want. So let's give you the little bit. It goes like this at the beginning. Okay, so if you want to pause and you want to kind of figure it out and have a go, now's the time to do it. You can hear hopefully a lot of repeated notes in the middle. Um, so the first little hot note is like a, a high C with the octave key on down to G. It's hardly even there. So um, and then the G is the note we're going to do quite a few of. Okay, and the next bit goes like this. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of think where that's going. It's going back up again. So using our pentatonic, we're going um, from the G to the A to the C. So that whole little chunk. Okay. And then it uses a little bit of a space because on um, the track that he plays with, there's like a, a kind of a backing figure. Uh, but what's really important to think about when you're playing and you're kind of hopefully using some of these lifts, riffs to kind of put in your own playing is um, thinking about uh, rests and spacing. And uh, what Gerald Albright does is, is fantastic, especially when he uses altissimo, um, is that he kind of does almost like he's two people playing. He kind of does one bit and then goes into the higher region and then does another bit and go into the higher region, um, like a game of tennis um, or call and response, as you might want to call it musically. Um, so he returns to this little bit again, but without the C. So I'll play that bit for you. So that's the same. So bow will get one free. We've managed to get that bit really easily. And then the next bit does this. Okay, so something that you might sometimes think about in your playing is kind of using percussional effects or um, sometimes what's called false fingering or in this particular case, it's overtones almost, okay? So Gerald Albright is doing a C and a different way to play a C. So another way to play a C is the lower octave C with everything down in your little low finger. But we well, can do it with the octave key if you want to cheat it. If you hear it sounds a little bit more kind of muffled, a little bit more, um, well, less pure as a sound. So C sounds a little bit less like a C in some ways. Um, you wouldn't want to use it all the time in your playing, but it's a good way to either create an effect or sometimes to get around a particular fingering problem. So he's kind of going C and then hopping to that low C fingering. So if you can do um, overtones, haven't got my thumb on the back there. C to C to C to C to C to C. Just be careful that your fingers are synchronized and getting out down together. Or if you could um, feel that that's too difficult at the minute, you can just use your thumb which is going to be easier to get the C out but then you might have difficulties that you might leave it on when you play the normal C and then it might end up going up the octave to that C okay so just have a go at that uh, again pause the video if you want to now and just have a go at going C C C C C C C C C C C C C C okay so we'll put that together as the the two little sections so it goes wait 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 
Okay, so hopefully you can have a go at that. I'm gonna put on a track G minor seven concert pitch and it's A minor being in B flat. Okay, so we're gonna go. Sometimes you might actually see, um, if you're reading a transcription, and uh, a few students have sort of talked about this, is you'll see that this little plus sign. So if you've written, um, seeing a, a written out transcription, then the little kind of sign like that shows that it's um, an overtone. So you use kind of a, a different fingering to get the note to get a little bit higher. Um, so that's worth practicing, regardless of the riff is the sort of overtone series. <laughs> Okay, so that's with your throat, uh, a side of this riff, um, you can kind of do fanfares, it's a little bit like a, being a brass instrument rather than a woodwind instrument. Um, but Gerald Albright kind of used these false fingerings um, and there's other sort of things that he does as another one in this same track where he's using A. And it's just kind of using A and then kind of flapping your fingers off and on. And because again, it's in that A minor. You can kind of uh, make it sound really groovy and um, percussional. So try and put that into your playing in terms of having this kind of almost two parts of you. You do like a riff and then you do like a something that um, repeats uh, with a change or in a different register and it will sound really cool. Okay guys, thank you so much and as ever, happy saxing. Bye. Bye.